Rock and roll. Chupa, 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 chupa. Chupa, chupa, chupa. Chupa, chupa, day. Hi, shining ones. It's Nova Cynthia Art, 13D, Star Seed Arts. And today is part three <laughs> of the Leo Glyph. Leo Glyph, hot abstract painting on a triangle canvas. And product review of Master Touch acrylics, brushes. We have a number 20 long handled bristle. And here we have a number 12 long handled bristle. And of the gloss varnish. So in part two, you saw me, I was like handling the sides and painting on it. And this is how it turned out. And on the thumbnail, you can see the whole image. But um, we're going to play with this a little bit. I'm actually going to pick it up and let you see the differences in the matte quality. Okay. Some of it's high gloss. Some of the paints are. Some of them are matte. And what I'm going to do is put a gloss varnish over it. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to put one coat on. You always use a soft brush. And these are pretty soft. And I'm going to use a round. A lot of people might choose to use a flat. But with all the texture on this painting, I'm going to have a lot more control going right in there. You know? With the brush. And making sure I get a nice even coat. And it doesn't gum up, you know, and leave a, a ginky looking clear film over the painting textures that I worked so hard also with my Italian painting knives to get <laughs> and having fun working hard so you can see this is very glossy that pigment is the light magenta high gloss and then you can see when I thinned it down right in here it's very matte these paints, as you thin them down, become matte, other than the iridescent gold that I painted the Leo Glyph with, held its sheen, no matter if it was thick or thin. And I also painted my NP Fanova Priest, your star seed artist with the twirling, swirling harp of art. Now, um, over me at a time getting this lined up. I am using a lamel gooseneck, okay? It wiggles, it wobbles, it boobles, it bobbles. And my Joby, you know, the fancy, the fancy ass Joby, don't get one. It didn't even last a year. I'm supposed to be able to wrap it around all kinds of things, in which case we would have no problem having this aligned perfectly. No, don't do it. I'll show it to you in the next video. It's crazy. But I want you to be able to see the whole thing, the whole painting. And, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, babies. Okay. So, what we're going to do here... I'll, go, I'll pull it up once I get rolling here with the, uh, with the varnish. I chose a high gloss varnish because in the thinner parts, it will actually sink in. And you gotta take these kind of demofloggies. Demofloggies! Oh God. And ever since that Tylenol maniac, you know, scare, who knows if it was a conspiracy, I don't know. Ask David Ike, he would know. Um. Probably has a video on it, but you got to pull that stuff off so you can get in there and get to the good stuff. And now, I have to rinse that jinky, jinky ginky off my hand. Yuck. Eek. It's so terrible. It's terrible. Okay. Got that off. Got a couple of paper towels here. We're going to pour what is going to be a guesstimate of how much varnish I may want. So I'm going to start with that. 
and I will do one coat while you're watching and then it will require another coat in an hour so maybe I'll come back on and uh, show you how to do the next coat you want to go in opposite directions or that's the standard teaching I just wet the brush you don't want to do it dry okay so wet the brush and got a little bit of that off because I don't want it all dripply. So here's what I'm doing. Just kind of getting it in the brush really good. I love these brushes. They've got a great bounce. They're soft and yet they have enough firmness to carry a stroke. As you can see, I did the Leo glyph with. So, you know, I really want you guys to be able to a little bit of a difference before we start I'm gonna pick it up for you now see see how certain parts have a lot more matte some of that's the thinness of the paints and other of it is the mixing it with other pigments that have a lower sheen that's what that's called a lower sheen it's really turned out beautiful I love it of course, I painted the sides. The sides are part of the art. And you don't frame these because, like I said, it's like a, it's a 13-dimensional Stargate portal art. Boom -ba, boom -ba, boom -ba, boom -ba. Okay. So we're going to make this fun. And <laughs> hope you can see that. <laughs> no, we're just going to roll on this, okay? Now I am going to hold it while I do it because the way the light's glaring on that, when it first goes on, it has that look, you know, that kind of opaque, filmy look, but we're going to get that in there really good in the ridges. And we're going to keep brushing in one direction, okay? Because when we come back and do the second coat, after we let this dry for an hour, we'll brush in the other direction. Then, this varnish is going to need to uh, stay on there and cure for a week. And it stinks. It stinks. But once it dries, it won't stink anymore. So you want to be sure to get the sides too, okay? And remember, the first coat, we're going to go down in. And that way, with the second coat, we'll go up. So see there, we'll get that. That's going to kind of seal the paint in. And it's going to give the painting a lot of longevity and protection. And that way, it can be wiped off if it gets dusty or gummy. With a gentle... Uh, a gentle cleaner just like a cotton brush I would recommend I mean well you could use just a cotton cloth that's what I would use and that's what I do use like uh, I save like old organic cotton pillowcases and make paint rags out of them they work great you don't really want to use a t-shirt it's gonna gum it up see I didn't like what was happening there here's what I'm doing I'm just going in there and making sure I don't have any jinky looking, little creepy like it'll dry plasticky looking. No way on the Nova Leo glyph. So we don't want to go in there too much though, too many times, because what will happen is you'll it'll get it kind of cloudy looking. You can also use this varnish medium mixed in with your paints and that's gonna change it to a gloss though which you may not want I actually like a mix which this will be nice because there'll still be a subtle sheen you know these thinner parts here when this dries that will still dry a little more matte so I'll kind of have those in here like a semi-matte 
a semi matte finish. Um, semi matte, kind of semi gloss, sort of a satin finish. I used to um, also do the advisement design for properties, like colors for a whole house. And I would take and mix out of acrylic beautiful colors and paints and did a beautiful adobe house in El Rito, New Mexico and would take those my own paint chips that I mixed and blended and my own finishes by using these I mean at the time those were golden acrylics I was using but I would use all that and I would have Sherwin-Williams mix exactly custom paints. And one project I worked on was beautiful, old Adobe, it was like 40 years old, was amazing. So I did the restoration advisement and uh, the interior and exterior, exterior decor. It's always so scary looking when you see this go on and look cloudy, but it will dry clear. <laughs> It will dry clear, baby booze. And so um, I mixed one color that I just loved so much called Nova's Blue. And all my wonderful neighbors was in an uh, Anglo and Hispanic mixed community. And it was great. Beautiful, beautiful people, all of us. I worked as co-chair of the Green Party for four years up there in uh, Rio Riva County. I lived on Carson Road and that's where this property was. I lived on that property and care took it for a year and lived on the property and oversaw all the restoration of it, including rebuilding a beautiful glass greenhouse. So my neighbors and some of my Hispanic neighbors and friends loved the blue, asked for the recipe, and uh, if they could use it on their homes and their windows and doorways and posts outside their house as well. And the Nova's blue, what that does is it invites the good spirits in. That's a tradition in New Mexico. Maybe Arizona too. I've got to get over there and spend some time. Maybe move in there. Um, I always thought I might live in Sedona, Cottonwood, or Jerome. So if anybody is living there, hit me up and give me some tips. I uh, feel like I'm needing to get out there and be with some of my star seeds. Okay, so this part hasn't been done yet. I'm going to go ahead, do the edge. That's pretty simple matter. Yep, got that good. Um, and it also wards off negative energies and negative spirits. So I was extremely honored. <laughs> I loved that tradition. I got out there, moved to New Mexico in 1996, Santa Fe, and then spent a year and a half in El Rito. And, uh, you know, I thought, what an amazing tradition. And so my blue was based on the blue skies of New Mexico, the one that I mixed, that I hand mixed, <laughs> and had Sherwin-Williams do the finish. And that was a, a satin finish that I used for that particular color. And they recorded the formula, and I gave it to my friends, and they could just go in with the formula and order as much of the paint as they needed. So here we have this lovely texture on the edges. So when I have that texture there, I'm a little more careful. So that's the story of Nova's Blue. And when you travel up in El Rito, New Mexico, you will see Nova's Blue. And also on a beautiful historic property that I did all the color advisement and restoration advisement for and subcontracted out to really talented local people to replace all the glass in the sunroom, which ah, was right 
that sun room was my studio while I was there. And I also had a sky room that I climbed the Kiva, you know, with a sky portal, like a beautiful sunroof thing. Yep. I, paint, I would paint in there at twilight and during the day, which I need, did Bodies of Light, an infamous series that you can find online. And you go to my Facebook art page, Nova Cynthia Arts, and my blog. I have them there. And you can get prints of them. You can order from me just by emailing me. So that's getting a little cloudy. Like I said, it really creeps me out when I see that. Hmm. Okay. Now we're going to get here. And we are almost good to go. Just going to check the edges. So, um, when I was doing the first two parts of this painting, right, this Leo glyph, I told you guys, um, check those two out if you haven't seen them. And that way you can catch almost the whole process of this painting being made. And it's in two parts, and then this is the third part with the finished painting. And giving you guys a demo of how to apply varnish. I had to let this dry, the painting dry and cure for a week. I really don't like that cloudy look there. I mean, it's staying a bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in there and take some of it out. I'm gonna rinse that smaller brush. So, uh, this varnish seems to be going on okay. I've actually never used it before. It's a product review of that varnish. So, let's hope it works really well. Because I love this painting. And I was going to option it and make another one for me later. But this is the perfect one for me. And it goes perfectly with my painting, August Flame and Winter. Which, I will do a, a little mini film of that and show you guys when the varnish dries. I'll show you how the painting turns out when the varnish dries all the way. So it takes a week to cure before you can add the final layer of varnish. Man, I am not liking that. I'm just, I'm gonna have to pull some of that off. I don't trust it. I don't know this varnish. So, for me, I couldn't guarantee that stayed milky looking for a minute. And mama don't play that. Mama don't play that. So, you guys see what I'm saying here? So I'm thinning that coat out. And when I come across with the next coat, Rock and roll, hit the Joby. I mean, not the Joey. Hit the gooseneck, babies. Hit the gooseneck. Okay, because it needs to move a little bit anyway. Um, I haven't made any of my shamanic music and recorded it. Okay, I am a lot happier with that. So we'll do Love Light, Galactic Love Light Star Language, and that was my spirit song. <laughs> That's this year's new spirit song that I got um, about a month before my birthday. I was born during the Lion's Gate, babies. That is open. Um, it's wide open until the end of September. We've got that beautiful alignment, alignment with our son and with Sirius, who's like 27 times bigger than our son. So, yeah, I'm not only a 13D galactic star seed, I've got Sirius. Serious, serious <laughs> star seed affiliations. And saw a beautiful golden lion was given the gift of extra lion energy. Saw a golden lion come through just, uh, I think a couple of days before the 8th when, you know, everybody talks about it opening on 888. But it actually lines up pretty close before then, sort of peaks and continues on. And as 
Many of you wonderful beaming shining ones that watch my channel and I've watched quite a few. See we gotta catch that right now. Right now. See that stuff? That that would have looked really, really ugly. Ugly, creepy, white, clear, nasty, nasty looking drip. So now that we're done, make sure we get those corners really good. Get that good. Now, let's check our top. See how that looks. We need a little bit. We gotta go in there. Get that part. Get down in there. Cause I don't want any of this paint to wear off. And these are good quality. And of course, you take care of the painting. The painting's gonna be fine. But they are not like golden that I'm used to. I mean, I do a painting with golden acrylics. Honey bunnies. You could practically ride your mountain bike over it and not have any kind of deterioration or damage. These, not even. And as I'm saying, as the first time I used them on this, and I'm having fun with the paints, I love them. They're like uh, a fraction of the cost of Goldens. They're like literally 10 times less expensive. So if you just want to play around with some acrylics, have a little fun, and you know, not take a second mortgage out on your mountain bike, <laughs> or house, or tiny house, or you know, not have to do a big art auction just to replace, you know, one can of paint when you run out. <laughs> I mean, they're expensive. I love them. They're awesome. So these were on sale for half price. And I thought, well, let, you know, let's give them a try. Let's just do that. Okay, we're going to let this go. That looked a little strange to me. Just going to let it dry now. I can't say I like this varnish as well at all as I do the um, Golden's Rock and Roll. Hit the hit the gooseneck again. You know, I hit it with, I do these wild hairdos, which at some point I'm going to do a starseed ramble with you guys and do some wild ass hairdos while we are talking starseed. Ah, oh, seed stuff. Ah, got it. Okay, I'm gonna let this go. But like I said, I am not loving this varnish. It just looks weird and cloudy, and it better not ruin my painting. Which was the point of what I was gonna say, is that I had promised to auction this one off once I applied the varnish and it was dry and all that, but that ain't happening. <laughs> Like I said, this stays with Mama, and you guys will know why. The ones of you that have watched the Star Seed Art Activation Independence Day every day, where I'm standing in front of August Lane in winter, which is 48 by 36 inch, uh, which is 4 by 3 foot, oil on linen canvas. And, um, they're just, this is like part of that same series. It's like a baby of it. They just sing together. And of course, I was planning to do one of these for me. And I just knew it. I already knew it when I was saying I was going to auction it. You know, because I could feel this in my body. I gave birth to this just about immediately. I was just checking the sides there to make sure everything's good. Everything looks great, sweetie, pokey pies, bobos. Loving you, loving you. Oh my God, I don't even know. <laughs> I was so out of alignment. But you know, we're working with what we got. We're working with what we got. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that's my porcelain. Um, porcelain, this will rinse out so easy. Works with oils and watercolors. How I got broken, I was <laughs> using uh, liquid watercolors and I was working with waterfall energy golden watercolors, liquid ones, or acrylics rather, 
and um, it fell off the waterfall. Okay, I had to dive in and get it, but that's okay. That's how it works. I just glued it back. It's all good. Those brushes worked fine for that. Actually, I think they work just as well. In the past, I've used flat brushes, soft ones, similar to this one, which is a low how, a low Cornell angular. And I've also used a sheep's hair, okay? So this is synthetic red sable. It's really great. I actually keep that for watercolor. And this is a sheep's hair, which uh, when you glue like Ross papers and do sumi paintings, it works fantastic for either one. I got that years ago. And this one was made in Taiwan. I've had it for like 30 years. That's great. I love it. Beautiful bamboo handle. Mm. You can see it's hand sewn. But that's another story. Bouche, bouche, bouche. Okay, sweet pies, sweet pies. I gotta let that dry. That's gonna take about an hour to dry. So, um, before I can come back and do the opposing coat in the opposite direction, which will make sure that we seal it and get in. You can see this, oh, it's dry to the touch already, so I can touch the sides. You see, it's got to get in all those tiny little grooves of the canvas. And that will keep dirt out. That will keep like dust out. That kind of crap. And it'll seal it so it won't get down in the paint. And then when you're cleaning it, <laughs> you'll be deteriorating the painting. Instead, what's going to happen is you'll be messing around with the varnish. And that can be removed at a later date if it ever needed to be. I've never had to. Okay, and I've been working with all kinds of media my whole career. So I have been like working with acrylics, you know, for three decades. I have never had a problem. I've never had any of my collectors, clients, anybody who's commissioned or bought a painting for me or, you know, gallery shows. I have never had any problem anywhere along the line. So um, I think we're good. I think we are good. Boy, I really like that. You see how that kind of brought the surface together to like a, now there's more of a consistent sheen. And like I said, that part still, the thick part of the, what I think of as fuchsia, it's like magenta at the top, like I seen. <laughs> Comes right down near the lush Leo grip. Wow, that's drying really quick, but still, I can't get feisty. You know, I am a Cancer Leo cusp, according to Sidreal Astrology, which is what I follow, and which is what I want to do a little video uh, right after this one, where we get into what all those energies are happening <laughs> right now as we speak on this new moon. <laughs> so we're entering into a new solar energy cycle. And in the Sidereal, this new moon is occurring in Leo, the sign of the lion and the Leo glyphs, which are right still smack dab in the middle of the lion's gate. And like I said, I was shown at this golden lawn and given even more lion's energy. So I looked up the medicine again of a lion today, and I go with, you know, well, what does that mean to me, huh? What does a lion mean to me? Well, it means courage and heart and love. Tribe, family, you know? And so in this case, we can start thinking Darcy family, art family, shaman family, light family, soul family, as well as our bloodlines, all that, all together. And for me, Syrians are my bloodlines. They are also uh, affiliated, connected, like cousins to the 13D Starseeds where I am connected. And the Lyrans as well, of course. Think lions, think felines. <laughs> Be lions. <laughs> so a little starseed talk in here. Let's put a blessing on this. Let's do a new moon blessing right now on the art. Shurara kumaka kusha shushumene na kana kubasa shumene katabone ni kato. Shata kumana shusha shushumoka tachumenita. Kulasa shumene kamaso. 
Atatra Jumina Kota, she shall show money. Shall I come mass with Shimini Kama? She shall cut it to do it. Oh, Sujimi Kama, we shish Kona Nikoma. Kushata to me, a Kushumi Kama Moeshana. Kodato to me, Sha. To the heart of the lion, to we all heart. To all Syrians and Lyrans. To all Leos, to all Cancer Leo cuss babies like me. And to all star seeds. To all shamans, to all artists. To all shining ones, to all. Love lot nations. Shumako Kukaku Shato, to all Bodhisattvas, to all my relations. <laughs> In all dimensions of all dimensions of all dimensions of all dimensions of all. Pokaku Krishishu Mantika no Mokasu Siminato Kato, Sato Kamikato Shato Kuma, Kuasu Shimina Kumato, Atota Kamita Ashu Shiminikano. Quatro de minha coisa, uma coisa de chimita, quatro de minha. Some fire reiki on there. I was given the gift of fire reiki during the 2017 eclipse and during the landscape of 2017. I love you, my shining ones, and thank you for being with me. And my star seed, star portal art glyphs, email me at novacynthia, novacynthia at gmail.com. If you would like to purchase one, if you would like to commission one. Um, my next ones that I'm doing, I've got two birthday gifts to get out that are wheel glyphs, and I also am doing a Venus glyph, all on these beautiful triangle canvases, which I love, which are beautifully, beautifully stretched, beautifully stretched, well done, and I always hand select them, and if they're not perfect, I take them back once I take the plastic off, because you can't always tell underneath the plastic. So what's happening here is that I'm next doing a Venus glyph, a Mercury glyph, and a Mars glyph, because they are all lined up. There's a stellium in Leo right now, okay? We have Mercury, <laughs> we have the new moon, we have the sun, we have uh, Mars, and we have Venus. And Mars and Venus are kissing each other, and Venus is still kissing the sun. She, and they're all hidden behind the sun right now. <laughs> so a lot of hidden information is there and going to be coming out. So I will um, look forward to hearing from you. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and let me know how you're doing. This Leo season, it's still Leo season according to Sidereal Astrology, which I go by because it's where the planets actually are in the sky, okay? If you look up at the sky, you'll see that... Um, the planets are in certain constellations. Like right now, the sun is in Leo. It's not in Virgo. <laughs> it will be in Virgo, see? But it's not Virgo yet. So this new moon imprint is in the sign of Leo. And this is my, my symbol for NP, for Nova Priest, which is my artist shamanic name that I got at my first shaman's death ceremony. And I... 1993, I guess. I'd have to look that up. That has been a while, baby booze. Then I got also initiated into the Muna Key. And that was in 2008, 2009. Oh, Alright, sweet pies. I'm going to let you go and check out. You'll see part one and part two. They'll be beaming up on this video too. And you can catch that Go back and see part one, and then you can pop over and see part two, and then part three. And we will have part four, where we finish up, and we actually get to see 
get on the wall <laughs> with August Wayne and Winter, and we'll have more starcy rambles with art tips and all that good stuff. So I gotta clean my brushes, and this is what I use to clean them. Highly recommend this. Works with any paint, any pigments. Oils, watercolors, acrylics. If they make it, this works with it. It preserves your brush, gets it really good and clean, and you can't let it dry in there. So I'm gonna go do that right now. You just run it under the sink, under water, running water, and you rinse this out. All right, baby boos. And for, just so you know, that's what my little porcelain brush holder that I rest everything on. So I think I like this acrylic pretty well. I think this is a, a great, fun, budget conscious series of paints, brushes. With these brushes, regular $20, okay? Which I also got those on clearance. And that's a regular 16, that's before tax. And other brands, this could easily be 40 to $60 for a size 20 round with a long handle. So just so you know, I think it's a good value. I think it'll get you up on your feet in painting. I say definitely get the 50% off sale when that's happening and enjoy it and go for it. Okay, I have to say it. The big imprint is going to be Venus and Mars, creativity, your values, communicating your values through Mercury. And um, that's for this whole solar, new solar cycle that's starting. That's the imprint, okay? And that goes for the next six months. So you're looking at through January, maybe February even. And um, the new moon is rock that which you love and stand in your sovereignty, your royalty, your power. Open up, get it moving. Come on, this is, this is now, okay? And it takes everything you got, but you got the Marsian warrior, rainbow, love lot warrior energy. Making love to Venus, our values, our appreciation of arts, of beauty, of the heart, of the home, of our body comforts, of our health, taking care of ourselves. And we've got Mercury right there with the new moon. Mercury's kissing the new moon, okay? He's like, boom, combust with her. He is making love to her. And he's kind of an androgynous planet. So he's she. It's that beautiful energy, you know, that divine feminine and masculine within. And he's right there. So bring out the secret of your true being, of that which you fully are in your heart. Bring that forward and give it. Give it to yourself first. Give it to your whole life. Do the meditations. Do your love light language or your galactic star love light language. I call it my galactic love light star language. And find that within yourself, you know, that still point, that place. I did that out in the yard today. I was meditating, did some yoga, little qigong. <sighs> Gonna go out and do some tai chi in a minute, at least a few minutes of it. I need another, just that moment, you know. I love you. Love light nova. Be free, creative sovereigns. Chacha Jumika, until we meet again, so much love, creativity, beauty, freedom. Chadokwana, chucha, buh.